stay tuned to learn how to answer ophthalmologic questions for both step 1 and step 2 CK. Let's start with age-related macular degeneration. On the fundoscopic images we have two types of age-related macular degeneration. Firstly, the dry age-related macular degeneration represents 80% of the cases. It presents with yellow pigment between the Brook membrane and the retinal pigmented epithelium. This yellow pigment is called drusen, namely these are drusen particles. The other type of age-related macular degeneration is a wet type. Every one in five cases is a wet type. This wet type is characterized by neovascularization of the retina leading to frailty of the new formed capillaries. This frailty is responsible for retinal hemorrhages. On step 2 CK there will be question about the best next step in treating the patient. If he has a dry macular degeneration, search for an answer that shows that he's given antioxidants or multivitamins. On the other hand, if the fundoscopic image shows a wet type of age-related macular degeneration, then opt for an anti Veg F, one such as example is Bevacizumab. The next type of fundoscopic images that we can find on USMLE is the one that corresponds to hypertensive retinopathy. There are four critical findings in hypertensive retinopathy. Firstly, there are flame shaped hemorrhages on the retina. Then we can have cotton wool spots on the retina. Here it is important to make the difference between a patient with AIDS and a patient with only hypertensive retinopathy. A patient with AIDS will have cotton wool spots but also a pizza pie aspect. On the other hand, a hypertensive patient will show all the other three signs or at least two. Other signs of hypertensive retinopathy are a macular star, lastly, as we can see here, is an arteriovenous nicking process. The next best step that the examiners search for in hypertensive retinopathy is usually the management of hypertension. However, on the fundoscopic image we can have papilledema. If the patient has papilledema and a history of hypertension that is poorly controlled, then the best next step is to decrease the blood pressure, this being an emergency. In the answer, we will s in the answer you will find medication that can be memorized by the mnemonic Lent cars. L labetalol. E. Esmolol, N. Nicardipine, N. Nitroprusside, and C. Carvedilol. Another fundoscopic image found on the NBME exam is diabetes mellitus retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy has two types. Firstly is the non-proliferative type. In the non-proliferative type there is, there is non-enzymatic glycation of the retinal capillaries wall. This leads to frailty and finally retinal hemorrhage with edema. On the other hand, there is a proliferative type. Chronic hypoxia of the retina leads to neovascularization of the retina with traction exerted by the newfound capillaries that will lead to retinal detachment. The treatment for diabetic retinopathy, the non-proliferative type, is represented by glucose control. On the other hand, if 
there is a proliferative retinopathy, then the best treatment is an anti veg F represented by Bevacizumab, or if it is extensive, laser photocoagulation will be preferred. Another ophthalmologic pathology frequently seen on the NBMEs is the central retinal vein occlusion, the most important syntax to remember is blood and thunder. On the fundoscopic images we will see venous engorgement and retinal hemorrhages. The next best step in the treatment of CRVO depends on the presence or not of the edema. If the patient has edema and a central retinal vein occlusion then Bevacizumab is the correct answer. On the other hand if the question stem will name that this is a new central retinal vein occlusion, then the management is done monthly with a fundoscopic exam for six months. If you like the content on USMLE, please let me know by subscribing below. Another image frequently seen on NBMEs is the central retinal artery occlusion. On the fundoscopic image, we will see a cherry red fovea, which is the center of the macula, and retinal arteries attenuation. Usually, the question stem will tell us that the patient had a sudden and painless vision loss. In this case, the differential diagnosis is made with giant cell arteritis, as an epidemiological fact, a giant cell arteritis is more common in women that have more than 50 years old. For central retinal artery occlusion, the treatment is given in the first 12 hours, namely thrombolytics. If by contrast the question stem proves the patient has a giant cell arteritis, then corticosteroids are the first treatment. Another condition seen on the fundoscopic exam is the retinal detachment. The retinal detachment presents with crinkling of the retina and change in the trajectory of the retinal vessels. The patient's history revolves around floaters and flashes these are the first signs that the patient had retinal detachment. By contrast, if the retinal detachment develops further, he will have the vision loss with a description such as a curtain drawn down. Treatment for retinal detachment is an emergency. This emergency is treated surgically. The last condition that we can see on NBMEs regarding the fundoscopic images is a genetic condition. It is called retinitis pigmentosa. On the fundoscopic image there will be pigmentations in bony spicule pattern. Also there will be pallor of the optic disc and arterial attenuation. The first symptom the patient has is nyctalopia. He will not be able to drive during the night. Also, he will develop peripheral vision loss. There is no specific treatment for retinitis pigmentosa. However, there is a known association between retinitis pigmentosa and a beta lipoproteinemia. If the patient has a beta lipoproteinemia, then we treat it with high dose vitamin A. A beta lipoproteinemia will impair the absorption of lipid soluble vitamins such as vitamin A. This will in turn will cause nyctalopia, but not because we have retinitis pigmentosa, but because there is a deficiency of vitamin A which will supply further. If you'd like to receive a weekly newsletter containing 
a summary sheet of this content, consider sending an email to the email address below. See you in the next one.